you're a home buyer, somebody or a young person looking to buy a home, you need a bit of a reset. There, there is a possibility on the other side of this that that uh, inflation could be could actually be quite. Welcome low. back to Real Estate Mindset, and today's video is going to be absolutely bonkers. Now the data is in, and today we're going to go over a report from Redfin that's going to go over data for existing homes. I really want to make that point because existing homes and new home data is completely different. Prices are absolutely plummeting right now with new homes. So I want to make that clear. Some people get that those two confused. So again, no new home data today, only existing home data. And here's the alarming thing. Really, really crazy. You guys, demand is going down. Affordability is going down. Supply is going up and yet prices are going up. So the question is guys, why is that? And we'll dig into all of the stats today on Redfin. I'm going to go over as well how to do a type of market analysis. So it's not going to be a full market analysis, but I'm going to show you guys how to do a market analysis using Zillow. So if you're in a state that's a non-disclosure state like Texas, it will not work. But if you're in a state like California, that is a disclosure state, this will probably benefit you. And I have learned some strategies on how to use data from Zillow, even though it's not perfect, but at least it's something. So we will be discussing that today. And listen, as always, if you find value, if this is helpful for you, if you like going over this data with me, like the video and shoot me a bonkers below, literally type in B-O-N-K-E-R-S bonkers so that I know you guys are enjoying this content. Now, the name of the article from Redfin is housing market updates, supply climbs 5%, biggest increase in nearly a year. So we're finally starting to get inventory coming back to the market. And I'm just going to read one line in the last paragraph here from Redfin, and then we're going to go straight into the data. Now, the first line states the supply of homes for sale is picking up in time for spring home buying season and improving inventory is attracting some buyers. Now, generally, their last paragraph is over optimistic. Let's see what it is today. Increasing inventory has yet to dampen price growth, which is breaking the laws of supply and demand. The median U.S. home price is up 5.3% year over year. The biggest, the second biggest increase since October, 2022. And the median monthly mortgage payment is just $31 shy of its all time high due to elevated mortgage rates and prices. Remember guys, it's not just interest rates, it's prices that have blown up as well. Now, Redfin economists expect mortgage rates to gradually decline throughout 2024. Even though we have runaway inflation, they still think that for some reason, okay. An outlook that was little changed in the wake of this week's Fed press conference in which the Fed held interest rates steady. And comment below, let me know what you think is going to happen this year. Now, obviously you guys, I believe it's the 10th and 11th of April is when CPI and PPI come out. Do y'all think inflation is lower? Or do you think it's higher? Personally, I think it's higher because inflation is basically money and the government continues to spend at massive, massive hundreds of billions of dollar deficits. And they just passed 1.4 trillion. Isn't that right? So personally, I think inflation is going to continue to get worse. And I do not think interest rates are high enough. I'm going to tell you that right now. They are not high enough. We know that because again, prices, the prices of houses have not gone down on a nationwide average overall in 2023. But the interesting thing, again, you guys, new homes, it has. So what's going on? Let's jump into the data. All right, taking a look at this week's leading indicators. So the daily average is finally over 6%, sitting at 7.01%. Now, year over year, you guys, that is a huge change. So we went from 6.67% to 7.01%. So rates, again, are higher right now than they were last year. So we have less affordability in the market right now compared to last year. Now, the weekly average is 6.74. That's up from 6.6 .6 year over year. Now, mortgage purchase applications, which is demand, you guys, that's down 1% from a week earlier. But also, when we look at the year over year, it's down 14% from a year ago. Mortgage loan officers and realtors and title companies are taking an absolute beating right now. In fact, in real estate, we feel it as a recession 
already. Redfin Home Buying Demand Index is up 8% from a month earlier. Oh, that's really cool. And down, unfortunately, 5%, unfortunately for agents, 5% year over year. Now, Google Homes for Searches is essentially unchanged from a month earlier, but that is down when we look at year over year massively at 18%. So demand is also down. So supplies up, uh, affordability is down, demand is down. We just need prices to come down. Wouldn't you agree? Comment below. Now, touring activity at this time last year, it was up 19% from the start of 2023. So it's not giving us any month over month or year over year comparisons, probably because they don't like what they see. Now, take a look at this week's winners and this week's losers. And I want to make a huge point here. This is not counting from peak. From peak, a lot of these cities do not have this type of growth whatsoever. From peak. But again, this is comparing year over year. And you're going to notice a lot of the metros are now off the loser list. But let's look at the top five metro areas according to median sales price increases. Number one is San Jose, California at 18.9%. And then we have a usual suspect. So Florida's coming in here again with Miami. Even though inventory is exploding in Miami, prices are still elevated, sitting at a growth rate of 15.6% year over year. Then we have West Palm Beach, Florida, sitting at 15.3%. And then we have Newark. Is that how you pronounce that? I mean, it's a joke at this point. Newark is up 14.6%. And then another California metro with Anaheim, California, sitting up at 14.5%. Now, all of those areas have limited inventory for new homes. I believe the more new home clusters are around your metro area, the softer the prices will become. Now, the only losing metro area that they're tracking, remember, they don't track every metro area. So there are multiple metro areas. In fact, I'm tracking them myself that are on the year over year price decline list, but they only have San Antonio. Okay. Again, I have a list of multiple, but San Antonio is down 1.5%. Very interesting that we're no longer are saying Austin yet on this list. But do me a favor, guys, comment below. Do you think Austin's going to come back on this list? Probably, even though they've lost so much already. All right, let's visualize some data. I got my trusty little Apple pen, so I'm going to write all over these graphs, and let's see where we're at this week. And remember, you guys, these graphs that we're looking at are week over week comparisons, but they also have the last three years of data. So you can also use it to compare year over year or year over year over year, but we're looking at it to follow the trajectory of week over week data. Let me show you. All right, so we're starting with median sales price. Now that is up, according to this data, 5.3% year over year. And this is year over year right here, okay? So that's year over year. So there is growth of 5.3%. Now it's off peak. You guys see the peak was right here. The peak is like in the summer months. So it's off peak. But again, it's again, when we compare the blue line to the red line, that's what year over year means. So keep watching that. Prices have continued to go up almost every month going into February. So there was a couple, you guys see it was kind of plateaued and going down right here. But since we've hit February, spring home buying season is coming back and the prices are going up. Now, again, higher rates, I think that curves that. I think that the rates are too low right now. And I, I think maybe the rates would be okay where it's at right now if it wasn't for the deficit spending. The deficit spending is out of control, absolutely out of control. That's one thing that I've learned through doing this channel is just how much money printing is still going on. It never stopped. That's the correct, like I assumed a lot of it stopped. We're on pace to exceed the amount of deficit during lockdowns. All right, now here's median asking price. That is also up 5.7% year over year. Now that trajectory basically skyrocketed at the beginning of the year, kind of plateaued, but it's going up again. So honestly, guys, I think we need another, I, you know, I'm going to just say it, okay? Sit down for this. I think we need another rate hike. I think, I think we do. I think we need another rate hike. I think that additional rate hike would change the sentiment, sentiment again and curve buying because we need inventory. We need sustained inventory, right? When we have sustained inventory, prices go down. And if we really look at the existing home data only, not new home data, existing home data, I believe we're short 150 to 200,000 active units. That's it. I think as long as we can sustain 900,000 active units sustained, so we have constantly active units of 900,000, 
I think prices go down. In fact, if we go back to 2022 and we look at the deflationary pressures that were happening back in 2022, meaning prices were going down, like officially value and prices were going down in 2022. If we look at that and we match that with the inventory, we see we had that much inventory. We didn't even make a million. We had under a million and we had that type of price decline. So I think that's all we need. Let's get back into the data. Now, this one right here, you guys, continues to blow my mind. And it blows my mind because it's like there are some people still purchasing. Home buying, home buying housing payments, which means if you buy right now, not if you've already bought, potentially just depends when you buy, right? But you guys, that's up somehow up eight and a half percent year over year. So all the people that were expecting to refinance into a lower rate, I mean, you guys are starting to realize that was a bunch of nonsense that realtors were saying. You can't say that to people, in my opinion. It, it, it's very reckless advice. Just buy now and hope to refinance later without telling them what it takes to refinance and how expensive refinancing is. But the average mortgage payment right now is $2,685. Now, basically, guys, depending on the data that we're looking at, we need an increase of about 60% in income, okay, for us to go back to something that's more sustainable, historically sustainable, or we need prices to go down about 40%, okay, and this is approximate. So we are way out of wax deal, you guys. The housing market right now is still madly, insanely toxic. So again, I'll show you how to do a market analysis using data from Zillow. But if you're out there, you know, shopping for a house, understand how toxic it is. And, and if you are purchasing right now, please, for love of God, use the fundamentals that I'm trying to teach you. Now, obviously, I've been saying this over and over again. I think we need to wait and wait for what? Recession. I think we need to get through the recession or at least make it through that, this soft landing. We, we're not in the soft landing. We're still flying right now. The yield curve inversion, the quantitative tightening, so much is going on. I think overall, we gotta wait. And if we wait, I think we get a better deal. However, there's still people buying. So if you have to buy, please, fundamentals, make sure you can afford the house, wedge, cash flow, proper expectations, no consumer debt, right? Being an asset at the company that you work at. The thing is, guys, this is what I'm afraid of. Now, I'm teaching people how to find great deals. When there's a housing market crash, great deals are easy to find. Right now, they're hard to find. But I'm worried that the deals that we are finding right now, we don't even know if those are good deals because the lack of price discovery. We have it with new homes, we, right? We have that in the data. But we don't have that in the data with the existing homes. So my, in other words, it's best to wait, you guys. In my opinion, it's best to wait. But if you don't wait, just make sure you're doing the right due diligence up front and you trust yourself, not a realtor. All right, now pending sales is also down 4% year over year. So that's a four year low for this time of year. Okay, so again, this is comparing this time of year right here to the other four years, all right? So that's another four year low as far as transactions, right? So we have a transaction crash obviously in the housing market. Now take a look at this guys, this is beautiful as well. New listings of homes is up 15% year over year. So that is exploding. However, I just wanna make a point that's still under 2021 and 2022. You see it was a little bit higher right here. So we are higher than last year, but just to be transparent, you guys, it's still not where it was like pre-pandemic or the first two years after. So we still need to keep our eyes on that because we need this to sustain. Now, here is the greatest news of all, you guys, active listings. We finally, finally, finally have more active listings than we've had for the last four years. So this is a four-year high. So we have a four-year high, again, for this time of year. You see that right there? So we have a four year high for this time of year for active listings on the market at 795,000. Remember what I said we need sustained? What did I say, you guys? We need about 900,000. Look it. This is when price decline happened right here, okay? You can look at Case Shiller. You can look at anything you want. It's pretty much unanimous. Prices went down for the first time rapidly, I may add, for the first time since the GFC right here where I've circled. And that's when we had, again, about 900,000 active units. That's why I'm saying that. So we have so, you know, so we need to get more. Now, hopefully we have that by July and August. Only time will tell. Also some more good news, you guys. We have 3.4 months of supply. Now that's still low. We need sustained four to five months. Technically, if we had six months, it would be way better, which is what we have with new homes. But nevertheless, this is another 
four year high for this time of year, which means we have more supply right now than we have in the last four years. So you guys see what I'm saying? So how are prices not going down still? And I'm going to tell you at the end why I think prices are not going down. It has a lot to do with realtors that are not telling their clients to find a good deal. Most realtors are only looking at their commission. I'll get to that in a minute. Now, this is something remarkable that we generally don't see for this time of year, which are the massive, like, like this, again, this is another four year high. These are all the things that we want to see if you're on the sideline. But you guys, we have 5.7% of homes that had price cuts. And that's just during that period of time. Total amount of inventory is probably 20 to 30% of total homes with price cuts. But look at you guys, the trajectory, this started early this year. This started in February. And it's probably because interest rates. Again, it's only a matter of time before we have prices go down. I think we just need a little bit more inventory. But again, Another four year high, very beautiful to see this. We just need people to hold off on purchasing overpriced houses as everyone was out there, you guys, trying to find a great deal. If we had more realtors, and here's the thing, here's one of the reasons why I think this is like that. Weak realtors, almost every single realtor is fear of missing out. They're still pushing the fear of missing out. If we had more realtors say, don't buy that house, it's overpriced, or we're gonna walk away if you don't do this or do that. If we had more realtors that weren't afraid of losing commission and really, really cared about their client, we don't, we're not in this situation. The problem is, is realtors are all out to get each other, right? They're not working together. If we were working together as realtors, if we came together and, hey, we got to be very careful for these buyers. We got to make sure that they can walk away. We got to make sure that they're in a position to walk away. We got to make sure that they understand the obligation that they're about to get in. If we had more people like that, I'm going to tell you guys, we would not be in this situation. We wouldn't, we would still be in a bad situation. Don't get me wrong, but we would be way better off. And if you're a realtor, again, I, you know, suck it up a little bit, but understand what I'm saying is, is we need to change. Realtors need to put the client before themselves. And that just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Anyways, you guys, sorry for that rant. One more set of data before I go into Zillow. Now this is Redfin Home Buying Demand Index. This is down 5% year over year. So demand is also at a four year low. So we're 5% under what we were last year. In other words, you guys, the signs are all there. The writing is still on the wall, but it hasn't yet affected prices, I believe, because of the limited inventory. It's been shocking to me that people still somehow afford these houses. I mean, it's got to be like the upper echelon of society that can afford a $700,000 house at a six and a half interest rate. That's insane to me because three years earlier, that same house sold for 400,000 with a 4% rate. Okay. You know, what's also interesting guys. If we look at millennials, you know, another issue may be millennials during their adult life have never had to deal with an overvalued house. Millennials do not know what an overvalued house is. Think about it. Think about it. Am I wrong? Comment below. Let me know if I'm wrong. All right guys. So here's Zillow. Now, Here's what I want to explain. We need to do, you know, whether it's right now or two years from now when we're in the recession, you guys need to learn how to do an analysis on subject property subdivisions. This is how we determine whether or not you're getting a great deal. Now, obviously I, I teach people how to do this, but I have access to MLS. You probably don't have access to MLS. So we are stuck using companies like Zillow. And what I want to point out you guys is you can actually switch to sold data. And remember, this is about subdivisions. So if I want information, sold data on a subdivision, I will zoom into whatever subdivision I want. And I can use this draw tool. Take a look at this guys. And I can draw around the subdivision that I want to do an analysis on. Okay. So let me apply this and let me show you. So now you guys in this subdivision, do you see that I have a hundred and 35 comps. And so what I would do is I would filter this and arrange this by newest. So I'm arranging this by newest. And now I can take all of the comparables for 2024, for 2023, and for 2022, add it all together and figure out what the average price per square foot was during that time. And then I can track that to the property that I want to purchase. Now, another thing that I would do, guys, is say I want to buy a house in this subdivision and it's a thousand square feet. You could do additional filters to minimize the amount of comps that you have to review. Now, the way you could do that is by adjusting your home type. Say you only want to look at houses 
and say you want to, and you also probably want to adjust the square footage here. Say the minimum square footage is 750, maximum is 1500. You know, so apply some filters and look at now I only have 112 comparables. But this is a general way to, or if you really want to see if you're getting a great deal, go to Zillow, draw a radius around the subdivision, and look at the last three years of data. I know it's tedious, but you have to be able to rely on yourself to understand what whether or not you're getting a good deal. And you guys, the reason that is, is no one's gonna care about your investment like you care about your investment. Now I'll do some more lives and show you guys how Zillow works, but that's the general consensus of how that works. Now, other than that guys, hang in there, existing homes, still very, very toxic. New homes, a lot going on with new homes. Hopefully that, hopefully the new homes, the price decline with new homes will spread to existing homes. That's exactly what I see happening in Texas. But either way, you guys comment below, share with me your intel and your thoughts. And other than that, if you're out there investing in real estate, you guys already know I wish you luck and I hope you win.